All right, welcome everybody to Sutter Vlogs. I'm on my way to work this morning in the Z06. When I get home tonight, I wanna to talk first impressions and whether or not I think a 2016 Z06 with the Z07 package can be a good daily driver. We'll talk. I'm home from work. It's time now to talk about the 2016 Z06 and whether or not it can be a good daily driver. Well, I need to start out just by saying for me, it's a great daily driver. After having owned the car for two full months and putting on over a thousand miles of commuting to work, driving to the grocery store, even taking it on short road trips or weekend cruises when the weather was nice, it has completely surpassed all my expectations and it has dispelled all of the concerns that I had about this car prior to buying it. So I want to share with you all of my favorite features and aspects of this car that make it so driver friendly for me in particular. In part one of this first impressions vlog I talked about the concerns and questions I had leading up to buying this car and I want to let you know that this car has more than exceeded my expectations. It has actually dispelled all those myths and concerns that I had about the drivability of this car. And I am so glad that I actually purchased this particular one. So what I thought I'd do in this vlog is share with you some of my favorite things about this car. Some of the features and some of the aspects of this car that make it so drivable for me. So here we go, where should I, where do I start? Even though I'm not one who really leverages the full power of this car, I still love the reminder on the badge inside the car that this car has 650 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. The thing that I enjoy the most about those numbers is the torque number. I love the feel of going from zero to 30 or zero to 60. It's the torque that really gives you the feel of driving the car. The torque is what throws you back in your seat and this car has more torque than any other car that I've owned. And it does throw you back in the seat. It gives you that exhilaration when you're going from stop to 30 or stop to 60 or even from 30 to 60. When you step on the gas, it throws you back in your seat. So that's something about the car that's not necessarily about the drivability, but it is about the fun factor and making it something that I want to drive every day. So along that same lines, I want to talk about the gearing of this particular car. I'm not going to get into any of the tech details about the gearing, but what I can say is that this car is super friendly to drive. I can drive it in first and second gear and stop and go traffic very smoothly and comfortably. At the same time, this car is an incredible beast. You can step on the gas at any time and this car is just going to yeah. I enjoy both aspects of this car. I love the fact that it can be super easy to drive at slow speeds and be totally aggressive and fun to drive at high speeds. And it's geared so well that even when you're slowing down coming to a corner, you can take the corner in third gear and still have plenty of power to accelerate on the straightaway. So whether I'm in stop and go traffic or I'm cruising out on the highway, this car is comfortably geared to drive at any speed. I mentioned in part one of this first impressions vlog that a major concern of mine in buying this car was ride comfort. After a thousand miles of driving this car in town and out on the highway, I can safely say that this car is extremely comfortable. Particularly, particularly, boy I hate that word, particularly based on what I had expected after reading all of those, particularly based on much better than I expected based on what I had been learning online that was scaring me away from buying this car in the first place. So to be honest with you, I really can't feel the difference between the Z06 with the Z07 package and the Z06 without the Z07 package. And I think that's primarily due to the selective ride control. 
I really love selective ride control because not only can you change the feel of your ride, you can also change the sound of the car and the other ways that it behaves. I primarily drive my car in sport mode. When it's in sport mode, the car is louder when you start it up. The car is louder when you step on the gas. Even the rev matching, which I'll talk about here in a little bit, has a louder rev sound when it's downshifting. And what I've found is I pretty much drive in sport mode everywhere and it is perfectly comfortable for me. However, I can feel the difference between sport mode and tour mode. Those are the two ride controls that I primarily toggle between. Every once in a while I'll go into economy and I haven't used track yet. So for those of you who are considering buying a Z06 with a Z07 package and have that same concern about ride comfort, I would say don't be concerned. I would say that this car here is more comfortable than any other sports car or supercar that I've owned. I don't hesitate to drive it anywhere, whether that's just across town or on a long road trip. All right, so now I wanna talk about competition seats. So first of all, I really wanted the competition seats primarily because I just love the looks of them. And so for me, in many cases, my decisions are made on the appearance factor of the car. But with the competition seats, I was reading that they were a lot less comfortable than the GT seats. Now I've driven cars with the GT seats and obviously I have the competition seats in this car and I can't say that one seat is more comfortable than the other. Now the seats do feel different, but I really love how the competition seats hug me. I think the bolsters on those seats are a little larger and the seat grabs you a little bit more. So I could see where this seat could possibly be a little less comfortable for a bigger guy because I'm quite a little guy and I fit really well into the car and into this seat. It's like it was built for me. So one thing that happens in a lot of sports cars is the bolster on the outside of the driver's side seat gets a lot of wear and tear because the person getting in and out of the car rubs on the bolster and wears it out. That's one thing that I really don't like in my cars. So I protect the bolster with my hand as I'm getting into the car so that none of the rest of my body rubs on the bolster and wears it out. So at some point in my life, I'm not probably going to be flexible enough to continue to do that. But for right now, it's a good exercise and helps keep me limber. Something that I've really come to appreciate with the C7 manual transmission Corvettes is a feature called Active Rev Match. Now, in all transparency, I didn't know what Active Rev Match was until I actually bought this car. So I started doing some research online to find out what rev matching was all about, and I discovered that rev matching is just another term for heel toe downshifting. So, my understanding of heel toe downshifting is that it is a practice that helps maintain maximum performance of a car when it is being tracked or raced. So I've been finding that there's a lot of mixed emotions on how important this practice is in driving a manual transmission car. Some people say that this is a practice that should be done all the time to save on excessive wear on the clutch or even the transmission. While others say that they've never done it their whole lives and have got 200,000 miles out of a transmission. So I really don't know whether it's the right thing to do or not. I do know that it's really easy to put into practice on the C7Z06, so I figure why not? So as I mentioned earlier, the sound of the car is a big part of the experience for me. That's my favorite part about rev matching. Not that it's going to give me better performance on the track because I'm really not planning on tracking my car, but I love the sound of the car when it downshifts. So as you downshift the car, the active rev match feature automatically gives the car just a little bit of gas to keep your RPMs up, and that gives just a really cool growl out of the exhaust, my favorite thing. So for those of you who are not aware of this feature, here's how it works. If you have the M7 or manual seven speed transmission, simply tapping one of the paddle shifters will activate the active rev match feature. The gear selector then on the display will change to a yellow color to indicate when active rev match is on. So in summary of all that, the active rev match feature is designed to maintain a smoother ride during downshift events, which in turn is another feature of the C7 Corvette that makes it a good daily driver. So now I want to talk about clearance. Clearance is always an issue with sports cars and supercars. I used to own a ZR1 Corvette, and I have to say that clearance was definitely an issue with that car. I had to be very cognizant of dips and speed bumps with that car and I would take the long way around neighborhoods if I knew that those neighborhoods had speed bumps in them. I have to say that I am extremely impressed with the clearance on the stock ride height for a Z06. 
I considered lowering my car. I know a lot of you have lowered them one to two inches and the car looks amazing when it's lowered that much. But considering that I wanna use this car as a daily driver, I'm not going to lower my car because I have been incredibly impressed with the clearance that this car has. Even though this car has the full ground effects package and it has the front splitter, I don't have to worry about scrapes and scuffs during daily driving. That makes this car a good daily driver. Something else that I didn't know about this car until after I had it was a, what I'm gonna call a warm-up feature. There's an RPM warning indicator that appears on the digital readout. It's a yellow and red indicator that surrounds the speedometer on the digital dash. Now I understand that this indicator is a reminder not to exceed the 4,000 RPMs as per break-in recommendations, but I also noticed that after the car is broken in, this indicator, this warning indicator, still appears on the car when it is not warmed up yet. As you drive the car and the car gets warmed up, this indicator gradually disappears. So when this warning indicator is showing and you exceed the highlighted RPMs, a yellow glow will circle around the speedometer on your digital dash, alerting you to the danger of excessive revving when the car isn't warmed up properly. And I think that's pretty cool. It's something there to help protect my car from me. All right, so this next feature is really, really cool. So this is something that I had in my R8 and is one of the biggest things that I missed after getting rid of that car. And I didn't even know that the C7Z06 had this until after I bought the car, so it was a pleasant surprise for me. And what I'm talking about is something called Hill Start Assist. Hill Start Assist is actually just an anti-rollback feature. So as you drive a manual transmission car, whether you're facing uphill or downhill, the brakes actually hold for I think a matter of four or five seconds and gives you time to step on the accelerator before it rolls back. So this is certainly a special feature to have in the car that makes it extremely driver friendly for the masses, especially for those not confident in their own hill starting abilities in a manual transmission vehicle. So one feature that I really appreciate on this car that helps protect the car from me are the front park assist cameras. This is actually a feature introduced in the 2016 model year. So that is one of the reasons why I really wanted a 2016 or newer car. One of the concerns I had with my ZR1 when I owned it was when I was parking the car in a lot, I was always concerned about that long splitter that stuck out the front of the car. The nose of the car is long enough the way it is, let alone having a splitter that sticks out another two or three inches. You can never totally judge that pulling up to a curb. So I would always end up being over cautious and parking a long ways away from the curb. Well now with these cameras on the front, the cameras give you a visual of the curb as you're pulling up to it so that you don't hit the curb with the front spoilers. So there are two ways that you can engage these cameras. One, you can press the camera button on the center display and that'll turn them on. Or you can actually put the car into reverse and then pop it back out of reverse into neutral or put it into any gear and that will automatically turn those front cameras on if you are going under seven miles an hour. Anyway, that's how I found out about this feature for the very first time. I was test driving a 2016 red Z06 without the Z07 package and I took it home for the afternoon. I backed it out of my garage and as I put it into neutral, I noticed that the front cameras came on and I saw that the nose of the car was still sticking into the garage too far. The garage door would have come down and just barely scraped the front of it. It was really nice to have those cameras and I decided right at that point that I wanted my car to have those cameras because I saw the value in it from that experience. So one issue you will likely experience with a car like the Z06 is how it handles on roads with grooves or ruts. So this is the case with any car that has wide tires, but maybe a little more so with the Z06 and I'll explain. So you'll notice a car with wide tires will have a tendency to grab at those ruts and pull the car more than a car with narrower tires. Because the suspension is so much more responsive on the Z06 than many other cars, even those with wide tires, the tug that it gives is going to be more pronounced than it is on other cars. 
This isn't something that dissuaded me from buying this car because I knew that that was pretty much going to be the case with this one. It has been with every car that I've had that had incredible suspension and wide tires. But if you happen to be someone who hasn't experienced a car like this before, it's definitely something that you need to be aware of. So many of you are familiar with heads-up display. A heads-up display feature is available in many cars these days. But one thing that I noticed in this car that I haven't had in any other car prior, this heads-up display has an option to show a speed limit indicator for most streets and highways. And I do find that to be very helpful, especially when I'm traveling in areas that I'm not familiar with, like on the way back from Illinois when I bought this car. It let me know what the speed limit was on many of the highways that I was on, even though there were long distances between the speed limit signs on the roads. So there are a couple other minor features on the C7 Corvette that I really appreciate and that make it a really good daily driver. It's not always easy to get the back hatch on a Corvette closed tightly or correctly with just one try. So the back hatch has a power cinch latching mechanism that allows you to close the hatch lightly and that mechanism then takes over from there and cinches down the hatch door the rest of the way automatically. So something that's pretty common in cars these days and that I never underestimate is the one-touch power windows. And what I mean by that is you can press the window button one time and it will automatically roll the window down so you don't have to continue holding the button. But it also, in the Corvette, allows you to one-touch roll up the window. So you can pull the window lever once and it will automatically roll the window all the way up. But now what's really cool, and this isn't available necessarily on all cars, is one touch up and down windows on the driver's side and the passenger side. Now I think that's cool. That doesn't necessarily make this car a better daily driver, but it certainly is something that I really appreciate. Okay, so there's one more thing that I wanna share with you in this vlog. Now this is something that doesn't necessarily lend to the drivability of the car, but it definitely lends to the fact that if you're using this car as a daily driver, it's something that you should be aware of. Now, I'm a little perplexed by it, but I'm gonna show you now. There are little pebbles lodged under the spoiler on the rear deck, and I have no idea how they got there. Well, I do have some idea. We're just coming out of wintertime here in Nebraska, the street sweeper hasn't come through to clean up the gravel that was put down by the county to protect against icy roads. And there hasn't been any heavy rains yet to wash any of that away. So there is a lot of gravel out on the roads and I can hear it clamoring up under the wheel wells. I cringe a little bit every time I hear that, but I figure I drive slowly, I'm taking care. But how did I get gravel lodged up under the spoiler? That one is perplexing to me. So those pebbles are lodged in there pretty darn good. It's gonna take some effort to get those out. And I think I have just the right tool for it, a wire bristled brush. This baby should be able to dig them out of there. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not that stupid. How many of you cringed? I wouldn't think of using a wire bristled brush on the paint of that car. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Yeah, psych again. I'm actually gonna start with this once I find the hose and extensions. All right, so I guess that's it. Those are my first impressions of the 2016 Z06 with the Z07 package. So if I had to sum it all up, I would say that this car combines amazing styling, both interior and exterior, and incredible supercar performance with everyday drivability. So I thank you guys for watching, and until next time,